All right, quiz review for the second half of chapter five. So use synthetic division to find all the roots and solutions given a zero or a factor. So we're told that three is a solution. All right, so three is what goes in the box. Now remember, we checked three, two, one, zero. So we don't have any zeros to fill in, okay? So the coefficient of x cubed, coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x, and the constant. We bring down the 1, multiply by this 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, multiply by the 3. 18 minus 34 is negative 16, times 3 is negative 48, 0 is the final number. It should be zero. If you don't get zero, it's a mistake because we know this is a solution. So what does that leave us? We start with x cubed. So this is 1x squared plus 6x minus 16 equal to zero. And no, that's not equal to this zero. Okay. It's just we're setting it equal to zero to factor and solve. So we need two numbers and multiply to give us 16 that differ by 6. So remember, we have 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. There we go. So x, x, 8, 2. We want more positives left over. So it goes like this. Don't forget, this 3 right here represents the binomial x minus 3, which needs to come down to our final answer. So if we set all these equal to 0, we get 3, negative 8, and positive 2. Those are all the solutions. All right, <clears throat> number 2. We have a 4, we have a 3, we have a 2, we have a 1, we have a none. x plus 5. Set that equal to 0, we get x equals negative 5. That is the number that goes in the box. Coefficient of x fourth, coefficient of x cubed, coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x, and the constant. Again, we should end up with zero at the end. Drop the one, multiply by negative five. Add straight down is three. Multiply by negative five. Add straight down. Multiply by negative five. Add straight down. Multiply by negative 5 and get 60, which gives us 0. Now, again, we start with x to the 4th. So this 1 is 1x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Remember, this comes down as an x plus 5. We're going to factor by grouping. I'm going to erase this and probably end up moving it. So I'm going to pull out an x squared, which gives me x plus 3, which I can immediately write here. What do I need to divide this by to get x? And that's negative 4. Put those two together, and here I have x plus 5, x squared minus 4, and x plus 3. And you think about it, we should have four answers. This is only three. That's because the x squared plus 4 can go further. So we have x plus 5, x plus 2, x minus 2, because x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares, and x plus 3, all equal to 0. Running out of room, so I'm just going to list the, fact, the uh, solutions. X plus 5 gives us negative 5. X plus 2 gives us negative 2. X minus 2 gives us positive 2. And X plus 3 gives us negative 3. Those are our four roots, our solutions. List all the possible real zeros. That's it. Don't try to solve. We're just listing the possible zeros. So, P over Q. Remember, P is our constant. And Q is the coefficient of the lead. 
So that is four over one. So our numbers are plus or minus one, two, and four all over plus or minus one. So realistically, if you're just dividing by one, those are only options. So our answer is plus or minus one, two, and four. Now here we have a little bit more. So on this one, P over Q. So we have 20, the factors of 24 over the factors of five. So we have one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. And here we have one and five. So obviously we have all the numbers on top divide by one. So we have plus or minus one, two, three, four, six, eight, 11, and 24. And we have all of those numbers divided by five. So one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, six fifths, eight fifths, 11 fifths, and finally 24 fifths. Those are all the possible solutions. Now, there's only four, but those are all the possible solutions. All right, eusynthetic division. So here's where we have the eusynthetic division. We don't know what number goes in the box. We can list all the possible P's and Q's and then start guessing. But again, I told you, let the calculator be your friend. Let it do the heavy lifting for you. So we're going to pull our calculator, and we're going to put into Y equals X to the third. Don't forget to come down. Minus 4X squared. Plus X. Plus 6. And we're going to go to the table and find y of 0. So it looks like we have a spot at negative 1. I'm going to go up a little bit. Doesn't look like we have anything past negative 1 on the negative side. Two and three. So we actually know the answers. It's going to be negative 1, 2, and 3. We can even see that if we wanted to graph it. There's negative 1, 2, and 3. All right? So we know the answer. You can pick any of these three numbers and start synthetic division. Okay? The beauty is you're going to know the other two answers, so it should make factoring much easier. Now, if you start with negative 1, you'll end up finding 2 and 3 from factoring. If you start with 2, you'll end up finding the negative 1 and 3 from factoring. And if you start with 3, you'll end up finding the negative one and two when you factor. So I'm gonna start with two. Split the difference, go in the middle. So three, two, one, zero, we're good to go. So one, negative four, one, and six. No need for zeros. Drop the one, multiply by two. Add straight down, multiply by two. Add straight down. Multiply by 2, you should end up with 0 here. If you don't, you did something wrong. Now, we write x squared minus 2x minus 3. And here's the beauty of it. We know that we need to get this and this. Well, that comes from x plus 1 and x minus 3. Now, if we're doing the actual factoring, you know, we have x times x. We need two numbers that give us three that differ by two. That can only be one and three. And we want more negatives. But here's the beauty of it. If you're not that great at factoring, this can help you find it. <clears throat> Don't forget to bring this down. That represents x minus two. And our answers are two, negative one, and three. Sound familiar? All right. Same thing. I could list all the factors, possible factors of, you know, 50 over 1 would give us quite a few to choose from. 
save yourself the trouble. Go here and put in the calculator. x cubed minus 2x squared plus 25x minus 50. Go to the table. And you can see we have one at 2. We'll step back a little bit. Nope, nothing on that end. So we have one at two, and that's it. Which means we're probably gonna have to, we'll have two non-real or two fractional answers. We'll see, okay? So we have to start with two. We know that, all right? So we have three, two, one, none. We're good to go. One, negative two, 25, negative 50. Drop the one. Multiply by 2, add straight down. Multiply by 2, add straight down. Multiply by 2, add straight down. We should get 0. So, what does that leave us? We start with 3. This is x squared plus 25 equals 0. Okay? This is, from last semester, a sum of cubes. And don't forget, this represents x minus 2. This factor is exactly like x squared minus 25, except for one little caveat. You're still going to factor square root, square root, square root, square root, 1 plus, 1 minus. The only thing is, right here, this would give us x squared minus 25. To change it, we need to throw in i. Okay, imaginary numbers. So, our answers are 2 negative 5i and positive 5i. Two imaginary answers. If we graph it, here we go. Here's two. And we don't even see the dip. It's off the screen. But basically, it's something like this, where that's our plus and minus 5i. It never hits the x-axis. It's not a solution. It's not a zero. It's not a root. All right, find the zeros and solutions to the polynomial by factoring. Okay, so this is just straight-up factoring practice. Here we're going to factor by grouping. What can I take out of 4 and 4? Well, a 4. x cubed and x squared? x squared. I'm going to divide. This is simply x plus 1. I immediately write x plus 1 right here. What do I divide this by to get x? Negative 1. So that gives me 4x squared minus 1, I'm hooking these two up, times x plus 1. I should have three answers. I only have two parentheses right now. But this first one is a difference of two squares. So it's going to factor into 2x times 2x. 1 times 1, both square roots, 1 plus, 1 minus, and the x plus 1 tags along. Now, if you can do this in your head, this ends up being negative 1 half. This is positive 1 half, and that's negative 1. If you can't, just come off to the side and do 2x plus 1 equals 0. 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. Number eight, remember, this factors the same way as x squared minus 5x minus 36. Okay, we need two numbers that multiply to give us 36 that differ by 5. That's 9 and 4. This is x, this is x. I want more negatives than positives. I'm done. The only difference on this one is the math is exactly the same, except instead of x times x, to get x to the 4th, I need this to be x squared and x squared. The 9 and the 4 are the same. The negative 9 the positive 4 are the same. Now, the only difference is here we're done. But this is a difference of squares, and that's a sum of squares. So this is going to factor to x plus 3, x minus 3. 
This is going to factor to x plus 2 with the i, x minus 2 with the i. So my four solutions are negative 3, positive 3, negative 2i, and positive 2i. All right? So this is a happy W, right, that is going to hit at negative 3 and positive 3. So we know it's going to come down like this, come down like this. It's going to be a W. These are evenly matched. So somewhere down here, it's going to come back up and do this. So here's our negative 3 and positive 3, and here's our two imaginary answers. It is never hitting the x-axis. All right, number 9. Now we're working backwards. So we have, we're writing in standard form, so first we're writing in factored form. So we have x equals 0, so that's just an x, plus 3 means x minus 3, plus 4 means x minus 4, but with a load, load, lead coefficient of 2, we need to put a 2 here, or with any of the x's. I'm going to hold off on the 2x to distribute after I do this. So I'm going to FOIL or double distribute. x times x. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. I'm just going to do this in one step. That's negative 4x and negative 3x, which is negative 7x. And now I'm going to distribute the 2x throughout. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. There's our three answers. 2x times negative 7x is negative 14x squared. And 2x times 12 is going to be plus 24x. And we do not have a constant. All right? Here we have zeros of 4, so that's x minus 4. 2i and negative 2i, so that's going to be x plus 2i. But technically, if I'm going in order, to be accurate, x minus 2i doesn't really matter. x plus 2i. I'm going to do these two first. So x minus 4 carries down. I'm going to get x squared. I'm going to, get, I'm going to do the whole thing here because it's a little tricky. Uh, remember, the inside cancel out. 2xi minus 2xi, so that doesn't go anywhere. But then... Negative times positive is negative. 2 times 2 is 4. i times i is i squared. But remember, i squared is really just negative 1, which makes that x squared plus 4. So what we have here is x minus 4 times x squared plus 4, a sum of squares. That makes sense now. Okay? We still only have three answers. Okay? And now I'm going to double distribute, or FOIL. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 4 is 4x. Negative 4x squared and minus 16. And the only thing I need to do is put it in standard form. So x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 12. And I could have done this immediately if I would have just thought ahead first. So that's my answer. Notice I have a cubic. All right, write the polynomial function in factored form, just factored form. So this is the same thing we just did, except we have to find the numbers. So we have negative 4, we have 0, we have a bounce. I'm sorry, silly me. We do have a bounce, but not as a solution. And we have uh, 2. The bounce is right here. That's the bounce that matters. Okay, so that means that's squared. So minus 4 comes from x plus 4. But we're going to square it for the bounce. 0 is just x. We usually put that out in front. And 2 comes from x minus 2. If you were to stuck the x in the middle of the two parentheses, it's no big deal. It would be the same thing. You're going to end up multiplying them anyway. But that's it. We're not multiplying it out. That's factored form. Now, being that there are four roots, these two count as two, that makes it even. 
It's a, a W, so that's positive. Remember, negative would be an M. Okay, in behavior, as it's going left, it's going up. This one's easy because they're both going towards positive infinity. But as it's going right, this is right, it's going up. All right? Number 12. This is a negative one, by the way, don't forget. Okay, and remember, if you don't remember, one way you can look at it is connect the arrows, and that would be a negative slope. If I write my name on it, I'm going downhill. So if it's linear, I just connect the dots, and I have a linear slope that's negative. Or you can real quickly, in your calculator, put in x cubed. Sorry. Getting all the wrong buttons. So I literally just put in x to the power of 3. Don't need all the other fancy stuff. And see the way that goes, which means this one is negative. Okay? Being that it's cubic, that's odd. 3 is odd. All right? Local minimum, where is that? Well, that looks to be at about negative 6. Local maximum, where is that? Looks to be at negative 1. Number of real zeros, only one right there. These two right here are imaginary. End behavior, as it's going left, it's going up. So as it's going left, it's going up. And as it's going right, it's going down. As it's going right, it's going down. And that's it there. All right, sketch the graph of the function and fill in the blanks. So we're going to sketch down here, All right? So where are my roots? My roots are at 4, negative 3, and 7. Notice these are all to the first power, so no bounces. I'm right now going to put dots at 4, negative 3, and 7. 4, 7, and negative 3. Okay. This is a cubic with a lead coefficient of 1. It's positive, which means it looks like it's going to look like this generally. So as it's going left, it's going down, and as it's going right, it's going up. But again, you can enter this in your calculator. As parentheses, you don't have to multiply it out. You just put in parentheses, x minus 4, parentheses, x plus 3, and parentheses, x minus 7. And hit graph. There's your negative 3, there's your 4, and there's your 7. Okay? Okay. So basically what it's doing is, it's all off the chart, it's going up here, off the chart, down here, off the chart, up here like so. And that's my graph. Let the calculator help you. All right, this one. This is zero, five, and negative two, but notice zero has a bounce. So zero, five, and negative two. Zero has a bounce, the other two are Powers of 1. Okay. This is also a negative, so we're looking at an M. All right. Which means this is easy. They're both going down. You don't even need to see specifically. So the degree is 2 plus 1 plus 1. That's 4. And the lead coefficient is negative 3. So I have a bounce at 0. I have 5. And I have negative 2. Let the calculator be our friend. Go to y equals. Clear out whatever's in there. Okay. And now we're going to put. Remember the gray negative key. 3x squared. Parentheses. x minus 5. 
the subtraction key on that one, and parentheses x plus 2. Oops, missed my parentheses. And I missed my plus. There we go. Now we graph it. Okay. It almost looks like it bounces above, like at negative, uh, like one, but it doesn't. Okay. So it's just a really close there. It's really thin. So it kind of it comes up. That's horrible. Gotta do that one over. It comes up. It comes down. It bounces comes up and goes back down like so. Okay. All right, factor to graph. So we're going to factor by grouping. I'm going to do it over here. So all I can take out of the first two is x squared. So that leaves me x plus 4. I can immediately write x plus 4 right here. What do I need to divide this by to get x plus 4? Negative 1. So that gives me, when I hook these up, x squared minus 1, difference of squares, x plus 4. That means this is going to be x plus 1, x minus 1, and x plus 4 just tags along. So that means I have negative 1, positive 1, and negative 4 for solutions. Negative 1, positive 1, and negative 4. They are all to the first power. So they all have a multiplicity of 1. It is a cubic with a lead coefficient of 1. The end behavior. Now, since it's positive, that means it's going to look like this, generally. So as it's going left, it's going down. And as it's going right, it's going up. And my points are at negative 1, 1, and negative 4. Okay, so I could graph it, but generally you see it's going to do this, <clears throat> this, and this. And, you know, if you go down here, if you're, you know, do something like that, it's fine. If you want to be specific and put this in, that's great. If you're feeling confident about your time, you can put this in and graph it and see how accurate it is. So x to the third power plus 4x squared. Minus x minus 4. And hit graph. Okay. So obviously I went a little high on the left side. Pretty close on the right side. But, you know, generally that's the, the behavior and that's fine. Okay. All right. Sketch a graph of the polynomial using syn synthetic division. All right. So, again... We could list all the possible. Uh, this does say state all the possibles here, so we're going to do it. Um, and we're going to let the calculator help us along the way. So P's over Q's, and it's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 6 over 1. So our possibles are plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6. So eight possible ones with three answers. So Again, going to let the calculator help us out. We're going to put this in here. Clear out what we have. X cubed. Minus 7x. Minus 6. And we're going to go to the table. And look for zeros. So there's one at 3. Negative 1 and negative 2. So, so negative 2, negative 1, and 3. We already know all three answers. <clears throat> right? Negative 1, negative 2, and 3. So we have this, we have this, and we have this. And we could even graph it right now and see what it looks like. Okay? So we know it's going to look something like this. What was it again? It was down off the chart. Yep. There we go. That's done. So I got to do the work. So you can, again, pick any one of those numbers. Negative 1, negative 2, 3. 
I'm going to do negative one just to be adventurous. Okay. Now notice though, on this one, I have an X cubed. I do not have an X squared. There's my X. There's my constant. Very important. If you miss that zero, it's all bets off. But the nice thing is, since you already know what the answers would be, if you do this and you miss your zero, okay, you're not going to end up with zero as a remainder, which tells you you made a mistake. All right? So drop to one, multiply by negative one. Add straight down, multiply, add straight down, multiply, zero. That's what you should get. If you forgot the zero, in fact, real quick, I'll just do it. One, negative seven, and six. Drop it straight down, multiply. Add straight down, multiply. That would have given you two here. And that means you made a mistake. All right? So just use the, that thinking as you're going through. So this gives me x squared minus x minus six. But the beauty is I already know that my two factors are going to be for this negative two and three. So negative two comes from x plus two, positive three comes x minus three. Also, I know I need more negatives than positives. Don't forget to bring this one down. So there's my answer, x plus one, x plus 2, and x minus 3. Okay, here are my two negative roots. Here's my one positive root. So again, what were my roots? Negative 2, negative 1, and 3, all with a multiplicity of 1. The degree is cubic. The lead coefficient was one. And again, as it's going left, it's going down. And as it's going right, it's going up. All right, it says make a super detailed graph of the polynomial using a graphing calculator. Show all the characters. All right, let's put this in our graphing calculator right now. Clear that out. So we have, notice we have a negative x cubed. Kind of small, but pay attention to that. Minus 3x squared. Whoops. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Negative x to the third power. Come down. Minus 3x squared. Somehow my x didn't show up. Plus 2x minus 2. Okay, so we have a negative cubic that looks like that. Okay, we go to our table and see if we find any zeros. So it looks like our zero, we only have one zero. And it looks like somewhere between negative three and four. So the calculator actually doesn't help us find a zero here. Okay. So we're going to do factor by grouping. I can pull out a negative x squared. Actually, I'm just going to pull out positive x squared. And that's going to give me x minus 3. And I put x minus 3 right here. And I ask, what can I divide this by to get x? Well, that'd be 2. But then negative 2 divided by 2 is not negative 3. So this one is not factorable. So we have to do synthetic division. So basically all we're going to do is use our calculator and get these points, the most detailed that we can. So we're going to put all these points on. So negative 4, 6, right there. Negative 3, negative 8. Negative 
negative 2, negative 10. Negative one, negative six, zero, negative two, one, negative four, and that's pretty much it. So we draw it, it comes down, looks like it dips down somewhere on there, comes up there, and like that. All right, so the degree is obviously cubic. 3. Lead coefficient is negative 1. As it's going left, it's going up. And as it's going right, it's going down. And the local minimum right there, it says estimate. So, you know, what? Negative 11, negative 12 maybe. The max right there at negative 2. And that's it.